Welcome back to the channel, guys. We're staying late tonight to uh, receive a delivery, and that is a very nice truck. That is beautiful. Hold out, I'm gonna go get a sweatshirt. This might be your favorite delivery of the year. Is the whole setup, Sam? I wish. Gotta see it up close. Could hear it two miles away coming around the curves. <laughs> Does have underglow. Why do the trucks always have to be so nice? Well, <laughs> that can't even be legal for Minnesota. Is it? I don't know what I'm more excited to see here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty cool. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I would. All I heard all spring wasn't. long was why did we let the Pro Force leave? So now I know why it is. Oh, you don't unhook his airline? I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you better show him. I got my bottom jaw now. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm not gonna go too into depth on this because I don't know the reps coming out to explain the changes from this one to uh, what we had before. This one is obviously not got tracks on it. It's a new undercarriage from my understanding. So they're pretty excited about it. They have some new Updates. Yeah. yeah, so we'll talk about that later, but this is a, uh, a demo unit like it was at all the farm shows this summer. It was in uh, Decatur, Illinois at Farm Progress, then it went, went to Big Iron, and it's now here. So just visually looking at the machine, we've already picked out quite a few things that are different. Obviously this one has fenders on it. That, that was an option on the track model. I don't know, it's maybe mandatory with tires, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say too much until like, I know what I'm talking about. I don't want misinformation out there. But it's gonna be interesting, running tires instead of tracks. I believe I was told it's lower profile. I, once again, I'm talking too much without checking in on that, but yeah. Excited to have ProForce back on the farm. Eric was very disappointed when it left. <laughs> like he almost cried. You've been checking the truck out more than the Pro Force. Just wish we could buy something that looks like that with, that would be mechanically as good as it looks. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. Well, if it is, we have not found that. It's not in the, truck uh, let's say, it's not in the price range that, that we're be. shopping. Maybe in. we just haven't spent enough yet. We Maybe buy, we problem. buy the, the ones that, are so junky they just repaint them and then we think they're really good and then that's what we get. Well, it looks it? good, it's gotta be good, right? <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Who would stick money and in that's, something that isn't good? That is how they get us. It pulls so easy, you can do it with a JD 480B. <laughs> I don't quite think the hydraulics are gonna hold up though. I should park it on Dad's lawn right out in front of the house. Why would you even say something like that? Uh, it's late at night, I'm not thinking clearly.
here we go. The paint is sticky. Down. Excellent job. Do you think Eric's gonna mind if we tell him he's gotta pull this thing with this outfit? That's what I said. Look at it. So it pulls so easy with tires on, you can pull it with a 480. I don't think the hydraulics are gonna do her though. I will say, I've never seen a low boy like this. It's interesting. Makes me so nervous stretching the airlines like that. All right, new day, new project. Those trees are gonna be uh, are gonna be leaving, so that we can farm there decent and unfold the sprayer at 120 feet. I'm here a little early. The boys are taking the 450 off the dump cart, putting 9530 on there, because Eric drove it this morning and said I am not driving that rough bugger on the Pro Force. So he opted to go with the 450 this fall again. So. They're gonna swap those and work on setting up the new Pro Force. All right, we knew this project was coming, just haven't had time yet. So the excavator's over here. Let's get at it. Let's just hope she's not dead. Good morning. Every time. And there goes our first load. <laughs> I really heaped her up. Hopefully he makes it. He's just going over there where we got a current tree pile. Key, key to this one is it's leaning over the beans. So I'm gonna do my best to try to persuade him to land in the grass, but it is what it is. Come on, no, right in the beans. Nice. Well, they weren't much anyways due to the trees being here. I was just trying to, you know, look like I know what I'm doing. Well, unfortunately, the camera died. So, we're done now. Looks a lot better. We gotta send the skid loader over here to finalize the job. And then we should probably move those augers. But I hear there's a delivery at the farm, so we're heading back there. Well, let's just say that truck's even more pretty in the daylight. Oh, he's back and he's bringing more equipment, but this time, I know for sure I'd rather have this than the truck. The Avalanche 2598. It's here. Electric roll tart. That'll be nice. They did get a hitch on it now. They're, we'll go over all the details, but what I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this fall, it's here. Well, here it is. She's done farm showing also. You excited for this one? I am. I, am. I like the black. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. It's black metallic, so it's like sparkly. And it's going to look really nice behind the 580. You know how the Pro Force showed up and we kind of wanted the, the truck and the Pro Force. It's a tough decision. It's a lot easier with this one. <laughs> he can leave. I want this. Yeah. <laughs> so this is basically the same size or is the same size as the 2596. The 2598's got a few different features that we'll talk about throughout the season. Obviously the tracks are totally uh, different. Totally different, which looks awesome. And looks like a lot less places where mud could get into. Integrated scoreboard. It's got a rear camera on it. And I wonder where they got the idea to add a hitch for pulling head trailers from which also has wiring so we can plug our trailers into. That's sweet. That is sweet. And this one has the fire kit. So I guess a lot of custom harvesters, this was a request. Oh, well, it's on now. I think they've offered that for a while, but this one has it, which is pretty cool. So now we can be our own fire department.
What do you think? You new cart driver? You know, I had forgot that I had never drove this tractor before, so... And then you get in and there. And then I got in there, and it's like, God, uh, the pressure, <laughs> the, the elevated pressure. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's, that's big. How come I built such a small shop? <laughs> what, what has happened to my nice big shop? Uh. It's no big. It's not big anymore. <laughs> that is, it's quite a day here. Never have I experienced it, anything yeah. like this. This is so abnormal from what my life used to be or the farm's life used to be but it yeah. is a day that will never be uh, okay so now comes the wiring part so since this has a roll tarp on it we have to run power wires like a semi back to the back of them this also has a roll tarp that has to be done we got to put a joystick in the 580 all around learn it oh we got to put a camera uh, monitor in look at this manhole access door can access the cart through here so you don't have to climb up and over it. It's got a ladder. Here's the hitch when it's folded down. You can plug in. It's foldable, so this is a lot lower. This is gonna work a lot better than what we had rigged up because when you go in and out of fields, the hitch was too high and would sometimes hook on the front of the bean heads. So being this is nice and low, it needs to fold because when you go through a ditch it's so long that this has the potential of hitting the ground but that's no big deal you pull this pin fold it up pin it that's pretty cool but all around we got a lot of setup setup work to do with this machine i really dig these tracks with how open for pressure washing i mean you can blow through the bogey wheels here if you need that's, I think the cleanup Brody on this machine is going to be way better. I don't think it's going to be money though. Well, maybe not this year, but some year it would be, will be, guaranteed. Going to put the joystick in there, it all comes with that, so we get a lot of stuff to do. So this is the tarp power cable that's got to be ran through the frame, along with this one for the joystick. That auger is way longer, I can tell you that right now. Uh, the fish tape is over with Doug. So we have to go get that. I think we've got everything wired, so we're gonna we're gonna test the fold function. It's taken quite a while to wire everything, but it's part of it. The kill switch is off. Folds fast. I wonder if I got the hydraulic fast. We gonna hit anything? Wow. Holy moly! Oh, the light! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you were more daring than I would have been. I would have backed up, I think. I couldn't see that light, actually. You couldn't see that? I set the light! Well, I seen it after it would have been too late. That auger is extremely long. an oil leak Where? on the rotate cylinder. Oh god. Something might be loose. Got that mounted there. We like them on the left hand side just because you're turning. The cord isn't over everything here. Possibly turning the PTO off. Uh, so left hand you're running the throttle and everything over there. So got that mounted. Hopefully he has no buddies that'll hit their head on it. But have to deal with it. So this is the automatic roll tarp. Look at that. That's so cool. So I guess a lot of custom harvesters that get in big fields wanted auto roll tarps on these. Um, we don't obviously, when we're filled up, drive back to the uh, truck with the tarp on, but I guess it was a request, so now you can get it. So this is I mentioned this before, this is the water tank, fire hose in case combine or tractor even starts on fire, you never know. Uh, here's a valve, you can go and drain the tank. This goes to a pump, which is just a little, just a smaller size pump like what's on our sprayers that's hydraulically driven. And then Chris here is putting the gauge up here so you can see how many PSI you're pushing 
because I can imagine you probably don't want to have it on 10 flow and just blow everything up. <laughs> we contemplated actually filling it and I said, you know, it'd be pretty embarrassing if something caught fire and we have our apparatus here to be able to put our fire out and it's empty. So, filling her up. Does it, anyone know how many gallons this holds? There's no gauge on it. Oh, 275. 275 gallons, so you better extinguish quickly. Luckily, Chris will be in the field, so he's a firefighter. He'll be just running with that hose, yelling, Wee hoo! Wee hoo! Wee hoo! Wee hoo! Wee hoo! Pumping! That's kind of cool. That's our PSI we're putting out. It's at 75 in the book, max PSI. All right, guys, we're wrapping up for the night. I think we got a lot of the stuff completed on this. This should be ready to go to the field very shortly, if not ready to go right now. I'd like to thank Umberfirth once again for demoing us equipment to show you guys this fall, and thank you guys for watching and allowing us these cool opportunities. I mean, it's truly amazing and it's awesome and it's fun to do and to be able to show you guys different pieces of equipment that's on the market and the new updates and it's just awesome. So thank you guys, thank you Umberfirth and we'll see you guys in the next video.